Good afternoon and welcome to the Seven Hills Fellowship Tuesday devotional. Those of you who've been tuning in know that what I've been doing um, over the course of the last few weeks in these devotionals is I've been unpacking some of the lessons that I believe that God has been teaching me um, in the wake of my diagnosis with cancer and then surgery. And so uh, that's what I'm going to do again today is I'm going to focus on another lesson that I believe that God's been teaching me. But before we jump into this, um, today's devotional, let me take a moment and let's pray. Father, thank you for your word. I thank you that in your word um, that we can know who you are, and not only who you are, but we can know who we are. Um, Father, I thank you that in your word you reveal yourself as a good God who loves us and pursues us, and that you reveal yourself as um, someone who enters into our suffering on our behalf in order to conquer sin and death for us. And so, Father, I pray today that you would allow us to find our hope and our strength in those true things um, instead of in our imminent circumstances. Father, I pray for the people of Seven Hills Fellowship that you would enable us uh, to pray and work towards the flourishing of Rome, Georgia, this town you called us to live in. And I pray all these things now in the name of your son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, before we jump into today's devotional, I'm going to read um, just a verse in a moment from Psalm chapter 20. Psalm chapter 20 was written by David, and as many of you know, David was a warrior, and he was a king. He was a warrior. So he went out on the battlefield as a warrior with a sword and with a shield and with a spear and with armor. And as a king, he directed armies, and those armies had horses and chariots and, and all sorts of weapons. And yet, in Psalm chapter 20, verse 7, David says this, he says, some trust in chariots and some in horses, but we trust in the name of the Lord our God. Let me read that one more time. So David in this psalm says, some trust in chariots and some in horses, but we trust in the name of the Lord our God. Now, again, the reason that this is important and to some degree ironic that David would be writing this is you think if anybody would trust in chariots and horses, it would be a warrior. It would be a king. But David clearly here says, Ultimately, my trust is not in those things. Rather, my trust is in the name of the Lord, our God. Now, the reason that I'm reading this today is because after my diagnosis with cancer, there were a couple of days between the diagnosis and going in to get a CT scan. And one of the things that the doctor had been very clear with me about is if the CT scan came back clear, that the chances of uh, the cancer being really bad were relatively slim. And so over the course of the next two days, I had a lot of time to think, are these uh, results going to come back positively or are they going to come back negatively? In other words, is the CT scan going to show that the cancer has spread or is the CT scan going to show the best news possible, which is that it hadn't spread? And one of the things that I, I found myself wrestling with over those two days is in what do I place my strength? In what do I place my hope? And what do I find my security? And what do I find my strength and my peace? Because if I find my strength and my security and my hope and my peace in my circumstances, well, then my circumstances are always going to be changing, right? I mean, it's possible that, that the CT scan would reveal that the cancer hadn't spread. But what if the CT scan showed that it had spread? What would my peace and my hope be found in then? What if I developed cancer 20 years later? What would my peace and my hope be found in then, right? And so one of the things that I made up my mind to do as I sat there thinking through uh, this diagnosis was I realized I've got to figure out where do I actually find my strength? What do I actually derive or from what do I actually derive my hope and my peace? And one of the things that cancer or any type of suffering does is it clarifies things for you very quickly. And very quickly, I realized that my hope needed to be found in that which was eternally and transcendentally true. In this case, for David, he's saying that we trust in the name of the Lord our God. In other words, I'm trusting in something that doesn't change. I'm trusting in something that the coronavirus world can't impact. I'm trusting in something that if the Dow Jones, uh, Dow Jones falls apart, that it can't impact. I'm trusting in something that is unshakable and is true. And one of the things that I determined very quickly is I knew that my hope and my security and my strength needed to not be found in my doctor, who was wonderful, 
or in the people that administered anesthesia, as though I'm very, very thankful for them, or in the report back from the CT scan, or the blood work, um, or from the pathologist, right? I didn't want my hope or my security and my peace to be found in any of those things because I couldn't determine the outcome of any of them. And the truth is, regardless, there are going to be innumerable times over the next 40 years, if I live that long, where my circumstances are going to be up and down and all over the place. I don't know where the stock market is going to go. I don't know where my health is going to go. I don't know what's going to happen to my family. But what I do know is that I have a God who is a good father that I have a savior who came and lived and died to conquer both sin and death for me. Therefore, I do not have to fear either sin or death. And so I very, very quickly and very clearly realized that what I honestly do hope in and find my peace and security in is not my circumstances, but rather the fact that God loves me that he's with me, that he's good, and that Jesus died and rose again for me. Again, verse 7 says, Some trust in chariots and some in horses, but we trust in the name of the Lord our God. My uh, admonition for those of you listening to this today would be that you would join with David and that you would join with me in trusting not in your circumstances, but rather trusting in the transcendental truth that God is for you, that he, is lo- that he loves you, and that he gave his son for you. Let me take a moment and let's pray. Father, I pray that we would not trust in our circumstances, financially or physically or relationally, but rather, Father, I pray that we would trust in you. Father, I pray that when we find our hope, that ultimately our hope would be found in you. Father, I pray that when we feel strong, that ultimately our strength would be rooted in you. Father, I pray that our identity would not come from our physical attractiveness or our intelligence, but rather, Father, I pray that our identity would be rooted and grounded in knowing that we have been adopted as children of the living God and that you love us and that you will fight for us to protect us from sin and death. Father, we pray all these things in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen.